welcome to Wednesday's News Moto, brought to you by For Real. In this news on two wheels, you get to watch footage of a ride in Cambodia while I update you on the news of the week. Obviously, today's ride is not a ride. It is, in fact, the second in a few botos Jeremy took with Prey Toll Moving Forward organisation. They do amazing work in and around Prek Toll, which is a floating village on the Tonle Sap. At For Real, we donate the money we earn from YouTube to charities in Cambodia. Here's the total we have donated so far. We are able to donate this money because people like you watch our videos, so thank you. In the description of this and every For Real video, you will find links to the charities we support. Check out their websites to find out more about what they do and donate directly if you'd like to. We regularly support REACH, Heartprint and Cambodian Children's Trust. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps. Okay, now the formalities are out of the way, let's get into the news. It is Wednesday the 14th of February. In today's Valentine's Day news, we talk about some huge news, the one visa to rule them all, my precious. Plus, toppling tuk-tuks, TB, malaria, and as always, a happy ending with a few good news stories. We start off with some really exciting news. Cambodia and Thailand are going to promote the Two Kingdoms, One Destination campaign in a bid to attract more tourists to both countries. And the neighbouring countries are also reportedly keen to take the One Visa campaign to three more Southeast Asian countries. According to the joint statement issued at the end of the talks, the two leaders tasked their tourism ministers to continue promoting the campaign. We've been waiting for this to happen for some time, as it makes perfect sense to have a streamlined tourist visa process for Southeast Asia. They also agreed to explore ways and means to further ease any cross-border travel issues experienced by tourists from Cambodia, Thailand and other countries. Tourism ministers of both countries are expected to focus on this aspect in the coming days. Meanwhile, reports from Thailand indicated that it is planning discussions with Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos and Malaysia to seek an agreement that a tourist with a visa or pass for one country can then visit all five without further bureaucracy. The Thai Premier's advisor was quoted as saying, Thailand will lead negotiations for tourists to require one entry visa to travel amongst us, all five countries. The idea is not entirely new, but plans have collapsed in the past as various countries have their specific requirements and prices. For example, Thailand now offers some countries, such as South Korea and Russia, 90 days visa exemption on arrival and without any payment. But rules in Cambodia, Laos or Vietnam for entry of foreign tourists are very different, as you would know. Reports also said that Thailand is keen on visa conformity among the five ASEAN countries so that the 27-member European Union, EU, could be encouraged to offer visa-free travel to people from these countries in return for similar facilities offered to EU citizens. The chairman of the Cambodia chapter of the Pacific Asia Travel Association said the Two Kingdoms One Destination campaign holds great potential for boosting tourism in both countries. If executed well, the campaign has the potential to benefit Cambodia by attracting more tourists, generating revenue and raising the country's profile as a must-visit destination, he said. He welcomed Thailand's move to initiate talks on the proposal for a single tourism visa for visiting the five Southeast Asian countries, including Cambodia. Thailand attracted over 27 million tourists last year, while Cambodia attracted 5.43 million. Cambodia's Ministry of Tourism has set a target to receive 6.4 million international tourists in 2025 and 7 million by 2026. Now, a crime and an only in Cambodia story. An official investigation has been launched after the discovery of 304 packages of ecstasy that were found by the fence of a police station in Phnom Penh. Authorities at an administrative police station found three large bags suspected to contain drugs. The contents of the bags were small packages with colourful labels, which could have easily been mistaken for sweet treats. When the bags were opened by the Phnom Penh Anti-Drug Office, they were found to contain a total of 304 packages of ecstasy, weighing 2.4 kilograms. Authorities are currently conducting further research and a massive rave. Drunk woman topples tuk-tuk. That's topples, not topless, as Jeremy first read it. An inebriated female driver has been taken into detention after she smashed into a number of vehicles in central Phnom Penh, causing a number of injuries. Witnesses stated how they saw a Lexus NX200 car lose control at high speeds after it had been observed driving in an erratic manner. I think being driven would be more accurate. 
The car slammed into a number of small vehicles, including motos and a tuk-tuk. Two men were injured in the incident. One man was seriously injured and was rushed to hospital. The woman who drove the car was detained by the police and taken to the police station for further questioning and legal action. In weather news, the Ministry of Water Resources and Meteorology states that high-pressure waves from China will continue to extend over Cambodia, with the northeast monsoon to accelerate the wind to Cambodia, which will hopefully result in slightly cooler temperatures. I think Katy Perry explains it perfectly. You're hot, then you're cold. Or should that be, you're cold, then you're hot. After some out-of-season hotter weather, it will be back to cool mornings, then heating up during the day. Temperatures will range from a chilly 17 degrees to a sweat-trickling 35 degrees. Luckily, mild to moderate wind gusts will make it slightly more bearable. Good news galore. A joint delegation of members of parliament from Denmark, Norway and Sweden conducted a four-day mission to Cambodia to observe how Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, Global Fund and UNICEF programs, supported by Nordic countries through multilateral partnerships, have contributed to impressive progress in maternal and child health in Cambodia. Cambodia's routine immunisation program stands out as one of the highest performing in Southeast Asia, achieving vaccination coverage rates exceeding 80% throughout the years for DPT-3, which is a combination vaccine against diphtheria, whooping cough and tetanus. Over the past decade, Cambodia has successfully integrated seven new vaccines into its program, thanks to crucial support from Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance. Vaccination against COVID-19 reached more than 90% coverage and regular boosters have continued. The prevalence of HIV transmission, tuberculosis and malaria has also dropped significantly over the past decade. Cambodia is committed to eradicating malaria by 2025 with annual numbers of recorded malaria cases on the decline. The manager of the malaria program at the Ministry of Health said last year there were 1,384 cases of malaria recorded in Cambodia, which is a decline of 66% compared to the same period in 2022, where 4,053 cases were recorded. Recorded being the key word there, I think. The seven provinces with the highest rate of malaria cases accounted for 88% of all cases nationwide. They were Pravihia, Stung Treng, Mundukiri, Ratnakiri and Krache in the northeast, and Kempong Spu and Pusat in the central south. Get some mosquito repellent because Krache City has been named as one of the best places to visit in Asia by 2024, Travel and Leisure, a famous New York-based travel magazine. The magazine also recommends some interesting things to do in Krache to the visitors, saying, visit the Irrawaddy Dolphin Habitat Centre to interact with the beautiful rare dolphins. Check out the waterfall of Champay and the Turtle Conservation Centre. If your timing is right, watch the turtles hatch and make their way to the water, helped by human hands. During dry weather, the Campy River dries out, making way for hammocks hung on the riverbed and makeshift bridges connecting villages. The best time to visit Krache is from November to May, the same source emphasised. Talking about those dolphins, though, a newborn Mekong Irrawaddy dolphin has been spotted, becoming the first newborn calf to be recorded in the country so far this year. The new calf is about two days old and was seen at a dolphin pool in northeast Krache by river guards and a research team of the Fisheries Administration and the Worldwide Fund for Nature. The baby dolphin was seen swimming alongside a pod of six other dolphins. It is estimated that there are approximately 90 Irrawaddy dolphins living along a 180 kilometre main channel of the Mekong River in northeast Stung Treng and Krache provinces. Now it's time to get a little bit excited. Today is Valentine's Day and as animal lovers we remind you that Angkor Paws Day is coming up next Sunday. It will be held at Clubhouse on Bamboo Street in Salakamruk. All of the animal-related charities, businesses and services will be there, so come along, support them and also meet some new people. It will be heaps of fun and we look forward to seeing you there. That brings us to the end of this week's news. You're now up to date with all of the most important events in the kingdom. Don't forget to join us on Instagram or Facebook if you'd like to see more posts about daily life. In case you missed it, we have a new video featuring a walk around the wall of the ancient city of Angkor Thom. It's not for everyone, but if you're interested, the link will be on screen very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, have a great week, and we'll see you very soon. Mm -hmm.